everybody. So today we are going to be talking about a secret ingredient that you might want to consider adding to your knowledge graph to make it more effective. And here's the thing, you might actually already be using it, but you might not realize it. So the trick here is using controlled vocabularies. So this video is going to walk through three different benefits as to why you would want to consider or make sure that you know which control vocabularies you're using in your knowledge graph project. And for those that don't do knowledge graph, here's the thing. I've had a lot of people ask me, well, Ashley, there's a lot of things on your channel about knowledge graph, but what happened to the control vocabularies and the taxonomies? Well, you really can't do one well without the other. But don't take my word for it. The early trailblazers in knowledge graph and ontologies, they thought taxonomies were pretty important. So for instance, Psych was a 20 year project that was funded by the US government and it came out to about 700 hours of manual effort to create this super ontology. And it still exists if you wanna go and check it out. But what you can see here is in the early days, taxonomies were the backbone of ontology and knowledge graph. And yet, if you look up the research today, words, controlled vocabularies, or taxonomies has largely disappeared. Now, that doesn't mean they're not used. It just might mean that the folks who are working in this space, maybe perhaps yourself, don't realize how important taxonomies are and still play a role in the knowledge graph space that we all love and work in. So let's keep investigating what is so beneficial about using these types of control vocabularies in your knowledge graph space. So when you are doing taxonomy, you have to understand who else is using your data and that could be a knowledge graph. When you're building a knowledge graph, you wanna be able to directly connect back to your relational databases and how your content or how your products are tagged and, and utilized. Well, that's a, that's a taxonomy, that's a controlled vocabulary. And if you don't know if you're using either of these things, you might want to consider checking that out because if the controlled vocabulary folks at your organization are not talking to the knowledge graph folks, probably a disconnect. If one is changing and the other doesn't know about it, you could actually have a lot of misalignment. There could be changes that could be breaking code or changing, you know, context of something and you don't realize it. So this is why it's really important to check that out. And for those that are wondering, how does this knowledge graph stuff affect me if I'm working in the controlled vocabulary space? Keep on watching because I hope this video encourages you to broaden your horizons on how your data can be used in a knowledge graph because it is quite imperative. And we're gonna go into the three reasons why. There are more reasons than three, but these are the top three. All right, so let's go get started. All right, so number one, I already alluded to this, but you need to be able to connect directly back to the data that you're using. So if you are a data mesh person, for instance, or a data fabric person, this is something that you definitely need to pay attention to because one of the easiest ways to connect back to existing data is using unique identifiers. And those unique identifiers are most commonly associated with things that are controlled. So controlled vocabularies could be something like this. So this is a very simple uh, control vocabulary for different personas for a customer. If you don't know how to define your customer in your knowledge graph, you're probably missing out on a lot of good detail that would make your knowledge graph and your analytics that you're building on top of that even better. So one way to do that is using the control vocabulary that probably already exists at your company. So the reason that you want to look at this is because it standardizes the way that the labels are created. It standardizes which IDs you're using. You don't necessarily want to create a whole nother set of IDs uh, in your knowledge graph if you don't have to. And then the other thing is a lot of these vocabularies have additional context to them that you might be missing in your knowledge graph. So if there are reasons that a buyer persona has been broken out into two distinct types, there might be a good reason for that that you need to have in your knowledge graph. 
So this applies to both a label property graph and a triple store. You would have a class, maybe customer, and a subclass, buyer persona. Or in this case, you might have two different types of buyer persona. And then those instances are then connected to those main classes. I think this is actually even more important for label property graphs because they have so much flexibility associated with them. You can just add nodes as much as you want. But if they're not connecting back in an interoperable way with your main data sources, you're probably missing out. All right, so the second reason that you might wanna consider in control vocabulary is they usually come with a lot of contextual data. Contextual data that would really help with your knowledge graph disambiguation and any analytics that you were deriving from that because machine learning loves context. So if I had a node that was Java, but I didn't know if it was Java the island or Java the programming language. Well, having additional context, potentially from those control vocabularies, is really going to help you. Now, could you go back in and add that context yourself? Sure. Why wouldn't you wanna use the data that already exists and that is already saturating your other data sources, right? That's probably gonna help you out. The other information that control vocabularies often have is a hierarchy. So that's not indicating, you know, if something is disambiguated or definitions, which helps you with that first scenario that I mentioned, but this helps you understand what structure you might want to adopt in your actual knowledge graph. So if you're doing a triple store, it could help you understand a class versus a subclass or on the label property graph side, it could actually help you understand how to roll up some of those instance level uh, nodes that you might have otherwise created. So if I had Nike and then I had um, address and phone number, maybe you don't necessarily need separate nodes for address and phone number. Maybe you can roll that up into contact information as your node. It really depends on what you need to model for your knowledge graph. But the control vocabulary often helps you think through those hierarchical kind of relationships. And there comes number three. So your relationships, that is the number one perk of using a knowledge graph, right? You can actually create these specific relations, how one thing is exactly related to another thing, not just one table is related to another table and you don't know how, right? But here's the thing, those relationships, it's just another form of a control vocabulary. So if you're not using the folks at your organization that are working on control vocabularies, this, if nothing else, is the reason to go talk to them because they're really good at creating controlled lists that are meaningful to your business. They really understand how to do that. So if you are um, trying to understand all the different relationships that you might wanna have in your knowledge graph or you need better control if you're already working on your knowledge graph, for those relationships, because they're kind of getting out of control, the folks that do control vocabularies are the ones to go and talk to. All right, so those are my top three reasons that you might want to use your control vocabularies in your knowledge graph as your secret sauce. And if you don't already know, you might be using your control vocabularies already, but it's really good to contact the folks that are using that because they will be your your partners and your advocates through your knowledge graph process and really help with the maintenance and interoperability of whatever you are working on. All right, so I hope this has really helped you. There is an entire uh, playlist of my videos that are dealing with knowledge graph and taxonomies. So if you are interested in either of those, if you're on one side of the house or the other, there are playlists down below if you wanna go and check out more on that topic that can educate yourself about the other side of the coin that might be working with your knowledge graph data. All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.